Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here at Convince Tech. On today's episode, what we're talking about is how to use your USB microphones like a Blue Yeti here on your Go XLR or XLR Mini. As long as those microphones have an actual three and a half millimeter connection out, you can make this happen. Let's jump right in and I'll show you how it's done. All right, so as we were saying, if you have a Go XLR or XLR Mini, or you're looking to buy one, but you don't have an XLR microphone like this pod mic or something similar for now, that's okay. You can use your USB microphone like this Blue Yeti, as long as it does have one feature, and that one's an important one, it has to have an actual 3.5 millimeter output from the microphone itself. Um, so that way you can actually flow the microphone through your Go XLR Mini. You won't be using this microphone in its normal sense through the USB powered. It will still have to be plugged in, but the actual microphone will be going through your XLR Mini using an aux cable. So if you haven't seen any of my other videos on the Go XLR, I have a couple of them. One showing in depth how to actually set it up and configure it. A second focusing more on the actual two computer setup. If you're going to be having a gaming rig and a streaming rig and you're wanting both of them to talk to each other, you can do all of that through your XLR. But for this purpose, when we're talking about a USB microphone, again, you will need an additional three and a half millimeter aux cable. Um, it would be male to male on both ends. And this will be in addition to any other cabling we've mentioned. So if you have a two PC setup and you're wanting to use a, a USB microphone, it will actually take three of these cables in total. But today we're going to focus just on the microphone. Okay, for today, again, I'm using the Blue Yeti. If you have a different USB mic, that's fine. As long as it has this headphone out or three and a half millimeter out. So that way we can be connecting it to the Go XLR. For one end of this cable, you will be plugging it into the microphone input. So again, on the screen here, on the mini, you see the front. It has headphones and the microphone. You will plug one end into that. If you have the full size, again, it's gonna be located on the back, but you will still plug this directly into the microphone input for the three and a half millimeter. Otherwise, you will take your microphone like this Blue Yeti, and I will be plugging it into the bottom of here, which is where my port is. Your microphone might be a little bit different, but again, one end will be plugged into the microphone, the other into the actual Go XLR. Also, please note, you do need the microphone plugged in via USB to your computer so that it does get power. We will not be using the USB option. We will be using it through the Go XLR device, but it does have to be plugged in and powered on to function. Now, after you have the microphone plugged in accordingly, again, USB powered on and the three and a half millimeter cable or aux cable connected on both ends, you need to jump into the Go XLR app on your computer that the Go XLR is plugged into. What you will see here under your settings is we want to go to the mic tab. Now I'm not going to personally change mine because as you can see, I'm using my Go XLR right now um, with my dynamic mic, but what you will be choosing is the mic setup. And then under this, you will see another option for three and a half millimeter. Now, when you switch to this mic type, this will give you the option to begin using that port on the Go XLR. Um, you want to make sure you choose the right type of microphone. As you see here on my pod mic, it is a dynamic. If you have a condenser, even though that would be an actual XLR microphone as well, you would want to make sure you're choosing the right type. But then to be able to use this actual Blue Yeti, all we have to do is click right here on the three and a half millimeter option. And then you will start to see it come through on the mic meter and you can adjust the gain accordingly. Now, all your other settings in, in here will be, you know, up to you depending on your device. You will want to make sure this sounds right, which you can see here for my noise gate and for my equalizer and my compressor and stuff as I scroll across. These are settings for this particular mic. So you will want to adjust them as you see fit to what sounds good for you using that microphone and for your voice. Every voice will be different. Every noise and every situation of the room that you're in will be different. So make sure you go through these settings and adjust accordingly. The last step though, and this is an important one that you want to make sure you adjust is on your output and your input on your actual sound settings for the computer. You want this to still be listed as system for your output from your Go XLR. 
and then the input needs to be the chat mic through your GoXLR. What you will see here is if I choose the drop down, I have an option for my Yeti microphone, but that is not the one that we want to be using because if you're using the Yeti mic, it's actually going to be using it through the USB powered and not actually being able to be controlled through the GoXLR. So make sure you have it selected as chat mic from the GoXLR Mini or the full size GoXLR. And then for your output, as if you have your setup like mine as system, make sure you have that selected instead of the actual Yeti here that you see Yeti speakers, which would be coming through from that headset volume. Once you've done this configuration, you will actually be good to go. This will be all the setup that's needed to utilize your USB microphone with your new GoXLR until you have something like a pod mic. Whenever you're done though, and you do get the upgraded version or a, or a different XLR mic that you wanna use, make sure all you have to do is come back here under the mic setup option, you'll choose this, and then select either condenser or dynamic, depending on which mic you buy, and then you'll go through some of these other settings as far as your mixer settings to make sure it sounds right and that the gain and all is selected for your new microphone, but then you'll be good to go. All right, and that's it. We've made it to the end. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope this helped you out. If you have any other questions though of something I didn't cover, please leave it down below in the comment section. I will do my very best to get to them as quickly as possible. And if you found value in this video, smash that subscribe button. It definitely helps me out and we'll look for more content like this on future videos. See you next time.